What's going on everyone, Charlie here. We're gonna take a look at the exchange traded ecosystem and you're gonna see how this is exactly a group effort or maybe not so much. Maybe there is a piece cut out of this that we're about to discover here in a minute. But I'm, I'm gonna explain in more detail how this all works and how the creation and redemption process actually uh, transpires in these ETFs. So let's go ahead and take a look. For those of you that are still confused on what an ETF is, I'm gonna go ahead and explain it real quick briefly. ETFs, uh, they basically combine features of mutual funds and stocks now, like mutual funds, ETFs are pooled investment vehicles that offer access to a broad mix of stocks, bonds, or other assets. So you get a group of stocks, assets, bonds together, put them together, uh, and you create an ETF with it. Unlike mutual funds, ETF investors do not interact directly with the fund provider when buying. So basically, we do, we do not interact with BlackRock in, in any way, shape, or form when buying ETFs. Most trading occurs in the secondary market or on exchange where investors like you and myself buy and sell existing ETF shares. Now, keyword existing. The price of the shares is determined in real time and as with stocks, transaction costs are affected by the ETF's bid and ask spread or the difference between the buyer and the seller prices. So, who makes money off bid and ask spread? The market makers, right? That's how they make their money. They don't work off commission, they work off bid ask spread. So, if you remember what we looked at yesterday, in these two stocks, IW or two uh, ETFs, IWM and IJR. And for a refresher, IJR is in GameStop. It's the number one exposure to GameStop. IWM is in AMC. It's the number one exposure to AMC. So when you have low transaction costs that we saw on these, what does that mean? It means the, e the ETF issuer, BlackRock, is winning. And it means Citadel, the market maker, is losing. Because Citadel needs a, a tighter spread to make more profits. Now, a separate primary market involves large institutions like authorized participants transacting with ETF issuers, or BlackRock in this case, to create or redeem ETF shares based on market demand. So authorized participants have to interact with BlackRock. So in BlackRock has to be a factor in this. The only thing we're trying to figure out now is if the banks and the hedge funds are working together with BlackRock. And they create or redeem the shares based on market demand. And individual investors like you and I do not participate in the primary market whatsoever. And in terms of volume, ETF trading, according to this, in the primary market, probably in a regular scenario, is only a fraction of ETF trading in the secondary market. So that's what an ETF is overall, just a bundle of securities uh, put together to represent an underlying asset. And then they're traded or created on the market with the banks, hedge funds, and the issuer, and then they're filtered down to the secondary market where retail buys them. Now, to look at their history over time, so ETFs have grown quickly in both size and scope over the past decade. Globally, AUM, or Assets Under Management, accelerated from $675 billion in 2008 to $4 trillion in the first quarter of 2021. So, I mean, the time frame there, this is clearly their new instrument of CDO type behavior. And today, only uh, or over 270 issuers offer more than 7,000 ETFs. Now, remember, we're just talking about two relevant to some stocks we like here. There's a lot more. So this is just a small piece of the puzzle here, but you know, a large piece of that puzzle. But still, uh, takes up. Uh, there's more uh, factors in this. Many players help support the mechanism that enables ETFs to operate efficiently. In our first look at this ecosystem, we examine two institutions authorized participants and market makers that play central roles in ensuring that ETF prices are accurate and that trading is smooth in all market conditions. So it's critical based on their language here that you know ETFs, especially with the scope of them, they always need to be trading smooth. So priority may have shifted to the primary market not collapsing rather than the secondary market not collapsing. Now, if you look at this chart flow here, this is the flow chart for ETF uh, creation, redemption, and the participants involved. Um, and to summarize an uh, AP or authorized participant, it's a financial institution and it says often a bank that dynamically manages the creation and redemption. So the issuer creates the ETF and then the, the AP manages the creation and redemption of that ETF. And that's based on demand supposedly and the value of the underlying security. Now each AP has an agreement, so each bank in this example or each Citadel will have an agreement with BlackRock 
the sponsor that gives it the right, but not the obligation, to create and redeem ETF shares. Banks may act on their own behalf or on behalf of market participants and are not compensated by ETF sponsors. Examples of APs include Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and Citigroup. Now, a market maker is a broker dealer that regularly provides two sided buy and sell quotes to clients. They provide liquidity, of course, in this ecosystem, and um, that ensures that uh, trading can be continuous and efficient. Now, the role of a market maker is distinct from uh, that of an AP, though both are necessary for robust ETF trading activity. Now, it says right here that a market maker does not need to be an AP, nor does an AP need to be a market maker. But still, some firms play both roles in certain ETFs. So there you have it. We can have some banks playing both roles and then some hedge funds playing both roles as well. So as confusing as this all is about to get or is getting already, look at this flow chart here. So this is the primary market that retail has nothing to do with as far as anything that's going on. All we interact with is the exchange. That's basically it. So you have the ETF here. We're just going to put GameStop. As the, or, I'm sorry, this is the underlying security right here at GameStop. Whenever it's uh, created, right, iShares goes and gets the stock. And then they give it to the bank. And then the bank creates the securities basket, at which point they deliver to iShares. Now, if we look, APs dynamically adjust the number of ETF shares outstanding, and in doing so, increase efficiency and reduce costs for ETF investors. Now there's two ways that you can create an ETF. You can number one, deliver a creation basket or a pre-specified bundle of securities representing the underlying index to the ETF issuer or real shares. <clears throat> so if you follow this arrow here, you have GME AMC, real shares, put them on this little thing, you create the ETF right here, <clears throat> and then the ETF uh, is given to the participant who gives it to the exchange or the market maker. If I believe if they're selling, they sell, or I'm sorry, if they're uh, if they're buying, they buy from the exchange. If they're selling, they sell to the market maker in most cases. Now, number two, they can also provide cash equal to the full or partial value of the creation basket to the ETF issuer, which is likely what's going on. They're likely creating these ETFs using method number two because the shares everyone knows are not available because we own them all. <clears throat> Excuse me. In return. The ETF issuer will deliver new shares of the ETF to the AP. The AP can then hold these shares in their inventory or sell them to investors in the secondary market. So we all know right now the earnings coming up, they don't want to sell them, or I'm sorry, they don't want to hold them in their inventory. So it's likely that's what they've been doing is selling off these uh, ETF shares that they're creating synthetically into the market to try to drive the price down like we all know. Now conversely, this is where it gets interesting. When there are too many ETF shares outstanding due to more investors selling than buying in the secondary market, i.e. supply is exceeding demand, an AP will buy ETF shares on the exchange and return them to the ETF issuer. That's how we can see price movement. But the problem is, since they're selling them all synthetically, it's artificially driving up their outstanding shares. Because if we go look at the outstanding shares, it's enormous. If, we, if you add up the outstanding shares between IWR, or I'm Scott, IWM and IJR, it's more outstanding shares than the SPY. Keep that in mind. So to initiate a redemption, the AP must deliver ETF shares that they go buy from the market, either obtained from inventory or purchased on the secondary market. That's what it says, it's purchased on the secondary market or obtained from inventory. So if, if you can imagine the scale of how jacked up this all is, they're inflating these e ETFs right now because that's the only thing they can do. That's insane. Now, once we blow this picture up now that we have the whole thing defined, looking at the big picture, we have underlying securities right here. iShares, the issuer, in the, in the creation process. Authorized participants run out and get the securities. Then they give those securities to iShares. iShares creates the ETF, and then the ETF shares are delivered back to the authorized participants, at which point they go to the market makers 
or to the exchange. The market makers, Jane Street Citadel, for an example, they take and provide liquidity to and from primary and secondary exchanges. So the primary and secondary exchanges. So Citadel's needed, they have to be providing liquidity to the exchange where retail is and liquidity to this primary exchange as well. So we can pretty much say that Citadel, Jane Street, the banks, and BlackRock have to all be working together. Because if we look at the puts on IWR, for example, we see that Citadel, Jane Street, and everyone, all the hedge funds, have very, very, very large, very large positions. And we just read a second ago that banks can be market makers also. That's why we see all the banks with puts and calls at the same price. That's how they keep that price locked in. And I'm sure it's done at a bid and ask spread that's convenient enough for these people to help. That's my, just my guess. So the goal here is to get redemption process going. The problem is they just keep inflating the ETFs to, it seems to be like to infinity, using synthetic shares or FTDs. So if you look at the shares outstanding now for IJR and IWM, we have um, 632.65 million for GameStop. And IWM has 301.750 for AMC. Now I called this one GameStop and this one AMC because that's literally what <laughs> I feel like that's what they are at this point. But IJR and IWM outstanding shares put together is more than the SPY. So interesting, huh? So is this what they're doing? You notice here how XJR has GameStop also, but a very, very, very small position. So uh, what they're planning to do is inflate these ETFs one at a time and just keep creating more ETFs to put more synthetics in and just move on to the next one and use this uh, XTSLA fund as an intermediary for the cash collateral required to create these in the secondary, in the secondary option we looked at. Because remember, if we go back, you can either create it with real shares or you can provide cash. Well, if they're low on cash, what are they going to do? insert a freaking government cash fund into it, right? I mean, I don't know. That could be the case. ETF sponsors determine the contents of creation basket prior to the start of each trading day. Modifying throughout the day as needed. Securities delivered may be a full replication or representative sample of the underlying index as agreed upon by the AP and ETF sponsor. Cash is accepted in lieu of securities in certain funds or under limited circumstances. In certain funds. Like a creation basket, the redemption basket is a pre-specified bundle of securities that represents the underlying index. ETF sponsors determine the contents of the redemption basket prior to the start of each trading day, modifying throughout the day as needed. Securities delivered may be a full replication or re representative sample of the underlying index as agreed upon by the AP and ETF sponsor. I mean, to me, it seems like they're artificially inflating this primary market to kick the can down the road further. Uh, I just don't know what the end game is for these people, but that this is basically how an ETF works. I hope this helped somebody understand. Um, it, it's just nuts. So to, to summarize all this, IJR shares outstanding is enormous and 46% short interest as per Fintel. And GameStop holding is 3.9 million and the most exposure to this ETF. IXR is small, only 300,000 with a small GME position of like, I think it's like 6,000 shares. So you have one that's overinflated, one with a very small amount of shares outstanding. Are these people working together to basically inflate these index or these uh, ETFs one at a time using the BlackRock fund as a tunnel, so to say? That's, uh, that's just my thought. Now, the goal would be to have the banks go and buy these shares back through the exchange, but the problem is there's no shares left to buy them from. But it's clear that the supply is already exceeding demand in these particular stocks. And uh, clearly, supply is beginning to exceed demand even in the primary market. So the key points from this is once supply is greater than demand in the ETF market, shares need to be redeemed or purchased through the inventory or the exchange. So they either, ha they either have a lot of inventory that they're using, that they're getting rid of, or they're just using synthetics. And if that's the case, I don't know... <laughs> where this is all going to end up, as Michael Burry said, 
the room's full and when the fire starts it's going to be hard for everyone to get out hold to the moon